Welcome everyone to today's lesson. Today we're going to talk a little bit about structures. And what is a structure? Well, you can create your own kinds of variables in the C language. And you do that by creating a structure. So you combine several different variables into a new kind of variable, like a composite variable. So if we create a file called struct.c, and we only need the standard IO library. And where do we define our structures? Well, we define them outside of main. So we create our variables based on the structure inside of the functions like main, but we create the actual structure in, uh, outside of the functions. So we can think about like when you're building a house, first you need the, uh, the blueprint and the structure is the blueprint. Then you use the blueprint in order to create the, the house or several houses that you create from that blueprint. And the same is true about structures. You create the structure, which is the uh, blueprint, and then you use that to create your different variables based on it. So let's say we will create a very tiny little database containing the uh, title and the last name and the age of one person. You can easily make this about several per persons and you increase the database, but in this example we will just do one. So we'll create a structure called person. And that structure will have three different variables inside of it. The first will be the title, and we only need eight characters for that. The second will be last name, and we'll put in 32. And if you have ever wondered why I use 32 and eight instead of like 10, and 30. I could use 10 and 30, but the way the memory works is that you uh, assign or you allocate parts of the memory in blocks of 8. If you have an older 32-bit processor, it might be in blocks of 4, but most probably it will be in blocks of eight. That means if I were to select 10 instead of eight, it would actually allocate 16 bytes of memory. And that would probably work just as fine, but this makes it a little bit more uh, controlled and optimized. And finally, we will have an int containing the age. And here is a thing to notice. When you close this structure's brackets, you end with a bracket and a semicolon. Usually you have either a semicolon or a bracket, but with structures you end with both. And that's basically because you can put names of variables here and then you create a structure or a blueprint at the same time as the building or the variable. But for now, use both just a bracket and a semicolon. Then we create our main function. And we will create our variable. So we type in struct and the name of the struct and then the name of the variable we want to create. 
So I will create a line in this database for myself. So I will call this, I will call this Birch. And then we will need to fill this uh, structure with the data. And I'll be using the string copy function to copy information into it. And you reference it by typing in the name of the variable dot and then the sub variable that the structure contains. So birch dot title is referring to the title, the title variable of the structure called birch, which is on this blueprint. And I will copy my title and I'll put the seven here. The third argument to string copy is the maximum number of characters that we will use to fill this string. And I always take the maximum minus seven. So I will not make a mistake. And I'll copy into birch dot last name my name, and I'll put thirty one here. And finally, I'll just type birch dot age equals thirty eight, and then I will print this out. So title, first name of the age, age. And I'll put these on different lines. So we don't create a very long line, and it, it'll be easier to read. So the first is birch.title, and then dot last name and finally birch dot age and then we'll exit accordingly <coughs> so to sum summarize this we create our structure that is the blueprint then inside the function we reference the structure when we create a variable based on that structure. So we create an instance of this. We reference that instance by the variable name dot and then the actual sub variable of that structure. So this can be used like any string variable. So we copy the data using string copy and we use this format when we put in, in put an int into it. So variable dot sub variable. And then we re reference the same way when we print it out. And if we compile this one, we get an Warning, yes, we need to include an additional header for that string copy command. So include string dot h. There we go. Dr. Birch of the age 31. So today we have learned how to create our own structure. We have learned how to create a variable or an instance of that structure, how to fill that structure with data, and how to reference that data when we print it on the screen. Thanks for watching and thanks for today.